Hello everyone, welcome back. The topic is post and core system from a chapter which is known as prosthodontic consideration of endodontically treated teeth from endodontics. Now that the tooth it is endodontically treated, so after that what we do is we give the crowns to the patient, so that becomes the restoration of the endodontically treated tooth. Now why do we give that crowns or the restoration? So first is to protect the remaining tooth from fracture. Now as you have done the root canal treatment, so because of that the tooth it is very prone to fracture because now that tooth it has became fragile. So to protect that tooth from fracture we are giving that crown to the patient. The next reason is to prevent the reinfection and the third is to replace the missing tooth structure. So this is the basic reason why we give crowns to the endodontically treated tooth now for example if your tooth it is grossly destructed so now in that case you don't have that proper crown structure now in the normal case if you have a good crown structure so in that case you can normally give the crowns because now when you do or when you give the crown so you need to do that crown preparation but now if the tooth it is grossly destructed so you don't have that crown structure to prepare it so because of that you don't have that good resistance form to give to that particular tooth so in that case when the tooth it is grossly destructed and when you don't have that proper crown so in that case you go for this post and core so post and core it is a restoration which is consisting of a post so that fills a prepared root canal so post and core is basically two parts of your system so post is the part which goes into the root canal and the core it is inserted into the pulp chamber that establishes the proper coronal tooth preparation so you can remember core c is for crown so core, core portion it, it is over that coronal tooth preparation so that becomes your post and core post is going into the like root canal so post is basically nothing but like a screw so you get that proper resistance with the help of this post and core for a grossly destructed tooth now what are the definition of post and core so post is also known as dowel so the dowel it is a metal post or any other rigid restorative material that is placed into the radicular portion of a non-vital tooth so over your non-vital is basically you have done the root canal treatment so what you're doing is you're placing this post into the radicular portion that is your root portion and this post it is made up of metal because now this like portion it should be rigid enough to like support this crown structure so it is made up of metal and it is fitted into a prepared canal of the natural tooth. So over here now you have done the root canal treatment. So now as we have done the obturation in the root canal treatment what we are doing is we are going to remove this gutta percha and we are just going to leave around 3 to 4 mm of gutta percha over here and then we are going to prepare this canal to place this post and after that you place this post over here. So when combined with an artificial crown or core, it provides retention and resistance for the restoration. And this definition is given by glossary of prosthodontics. So that becomes your post. Post is basically nothing but this portion of metal which is going into the radicular space. And core, it refers to a properly shaped and well substructure which replaces the coronal structure and it retains the final restoration. Now over here, this becomes, so now what you do is over here. So this is your post which is going into the root canal and over here this is the core and over this core you place this crown so that becomes your core so it is a properly shaped and well substructure and it replaces the coronal structure and retains the final restoration so the core it is designed to resemble or become the crown preparation or crown itself so when there are scenarios like you don't even need to place this crown over here so this like core it itself acts as a crown in some cases but mostly what you do is you do the preparation of this core properly like you do in the normal scenario and then you place a crown over it and again this definition of core is given by glossary of prosthodontics so these are the various definition for your post and core by the glossary of prosthodontics now what are the indication of this post and core so first one is where the natural crown of the root filled teeth it either has been lost or it is extensively damaged so when the crown portion of your tooth it is damaged or it is lost so in that case you need to go for post and core the next is where the root filled tooth is to be used as a bridge abutment now when you have to use so you have done the root canal treatment of particular tooth and that tooth is to be used as an abutment for your construction of a fpd bridge so in that case you need to go for post and core for the particular root canal treated tooth the next is where a change in the axial position it is greater than 1 mm and the next can be when the tooth it is more prone to fracture so in that case when the tooth is more prone to fracture so in that case you have to go for this post and core now what are the contraindications of this post and core so first one is if there is severe curvature of the root that means the dilaceration of the root so now in this case now as we are like inserting that post into the root canal and if the root is only curved so now that metal portion it cannot be curved so because of that you cannot use this post and core in dilacerated tooth 
The next is persistent periapical lesion. So if there is this persistent periapical lesion, that means there is infection which is present. So again, you cannot go for this post and course. The next in contraindication is if the periodontal health of the tooth it is poor. The next is if the crown to root ratio is poor. So now we have seen in the abutment selections that the crown to root ratio ideally it is two is to three, or the least accepted one is one is to one. But now in the cases where the crown it is larger than the root so again that means it is a poor crown to root ratio so again you cannot go for this post and core now if the roots they are weak or fragile so the teeth with heavy occlusal contacts again they cannot go for this like post and core because now as you are inserting that post so if the occlusal contact is this heavy so there are chances that your tooth it will get fracture then the patients with unusual and the occupational habits economic factor because now this post and core system it is expensive so if the patient they are having some economical problem so again you cannot go for this post and core and the next contraindication is the inadequate skill so these are the various contraindications of post and now what do you mean by biologic width so space is required between the margin of the restoration and the crest of the bone to have a healthy gingival attachment apparatus so to have that good gingival attachment apparatus there should be space which should be present between this crest of the bone and the margin of the preparation and this space is nothing but the biologic width so garglio he said that the dimension of this attachment apparatus it should range from 1.7 mm to 2.43 mm so he said that there should be at least 2.5 mm space so this means that there should be absolute minimum of 2.5 mm space between the restoration margin and the crest of the bone so over here now this is the crest of the bone and this is the margin that is the margin of the preparation of that particular crown so this space it should be at least 2.5 mm so now this is referred as a biologic width so fugazuto he said that this space it should be at least 3 mm so these were the two people who said about the different like dimension so garglio he said that there should be at least 2.5 mm and fugazuto he said that there should be at least 3 mm of space between the crest of the bone and the margin of the restoration so the clinician they should ensure that the restoration margin it does not impinge on that biologic width as it can cause periodontal breakdown so if you want a good gingival attachment so you have to see that whenever you are making the or when you are doing this the preparation so that preparation so that margin of the preparation it should not be on that biologic width that means the space it should not be less than 2.5 mm to have a good like gingival attachment so this is nothing but the biologic width now over here this is the biologic width over here now this is the biologic width where this is the preparation over here this is the margin of the preparation and over here there would be the crest of the bone so this space it should be like at least 3 2.5 to 3 mm now the most important is now what is ferrule so now this is again a very commonly asked short answer question so you should know what exactly is this ferrule so ferrum is nothing but iron and virola is nothing but a bracelet so ferrule is nothing but it is a metal ring or a cap which is used to strengthen the end of a stick or a tube now for example if you have a stick and you place a metal cap over it so that the stick it is strengthened so that becomes a ferrule so a dental ferrule it is a encircling band of the cast metal around the coronal surface of the tooth so now this again does the same work that it is strengthening your tooth so it is an extension of the restored crown which by its hugging action it prevents the scattering of the root now over here this is your post and over here this is the core now over here there is no ferrule which is present so when you place this crown so there are chances that your tooth it can get fractured and there is this scattering of the root so now if you prepare this ferrule so this basically is nothing but a ferrule where you are doing this preparation like a it is like a encircling band of the cast metal so when you place this ferrule so when after that you place this crown so there are chances that this tooth it won't get fractured so ferrule it is defined as a 360 metal collar of a crown so 360 is it is encircling all over the tooth so over here it is going to encircle all over the tooth and because of that it is a metal collar of the crown which is surrounding the parallel wall of the dentin which is extending coronal to the shoulder of the preparation so now your ferrule it is extending coronal to the shoulder so now we know what exactly shoulder is as we have seen in the tooth preparation so now this ferrule it is nothing but it is coronal to that shoulder preparation of your tooth so that becomes a ferrule so it is often confused with the remaining amount of south dentine above the finish line so it is basically this ferrule it is usually confused with the south dentine 
Tofferol in respect to tooth, it is a band which encircles the external dimension of the residual tooth structure and this band is usually the length of it, is it, it is 2 mm and the width it can be 1 mm. So this is nothing but a ferrule. So over here, this is your post, over here this is the core portion, over this you are placing the crown and this is the preparation that you are doing, that is the ferrule to prevent the scattering, that is to prevent the fracture of the tooth which is like in which you give this post and core. Now what are the various factors which is affecting the ferrule? So first is the height of it. So it is said that the height of this ferrule, it should be at least 1.5 to 2 mm. The next factor is the width. So it is said that the width, it should be at least 1 mm. If it is not so, then it is very thin and it can like reduce the effect of the ferrule that is preventing the fracture of the tooth. The next factor is number of the walls and the ferrule location. Now in this, it is said that the ferrule, it should be circumferential. That means it, the ferrule, it is prepared all around the tooth. So that is optimum but in this case now the caries it may affect so there were various like people who said that now you can prepare like ferrule only on the palatal portion rather than preparing it all around so that was the one thing and the next person he said that the person named Al Wahadini so he said that you can prepare a ferrule like 3 mm ferrule on only on the buccal aspect and it will be better than having ferrule at all so these were like the various factors so the optimal one is like you're preparing the ferrule all around the tooth but now there will be various people but the like ideal one is when you are preparing the ferrule all around the tooth then the next factor is type of tooth and the extent of the lateral load now in the anterior tooth you'll see that the load it is present like non-axially and in the posterior teeth the forces or the lateral loads they are loaded occlusal gingivally so you have to see about this and in this if the teeth anterior teeth they are having deep overbite or they are having para function so they are at a higher risk of failures because now in this they are having deep overbite so the load is more so because of that there are chances that your tooth it will fail and the teeth that are in the group function with long maxillary buccal cusp they produces higher lateral forces than if there was a canine guidance so if now you'll see if the buccal cusp of your maxillary teeth it is larger or it, they have a longer buccal cusp so in that case you'll see that the forces on that tooth particular tooth on that particular tooth the lateral forces they are higher and because of that there are more chances of the failure of the particular tooth so these are the like the various factors which can affect the ferrule now what are the advantages of ferrule so first is it promotes the hugging action and because of that it prevents the scattering of the root so this is where you are giving the ferrule and over here this is without ferrule so now over here now you can see when you are not giving the ferrule so there are chances that your tooth it will get scattered that is it is getting fractured now over here as you have done or as you have given this ferrule so it like is giving this hugging action and because of that it is preventing that scattering or the fracture of the root so it also has this anti-rotational effect and reduces the wedging effect on that particular post and it resists the functional liver forces and the lateral forces which are exerted during the double insertion and because of that like when you are inserting this post into the canal so it will like resist the lever forces on that particular like during that particular double insertion and because of that it will prevent the fracture or the scattering of the root so basic like function or the advantage of this ferrule is nothing but it prevents the scattering of the root so now this is the basic procedure for your like post and core system so now over here now as we have done the root canal treatment so there was this obturation which was done with the help of gutta percha now as you have to insert that post so because of that what you're going to do is you're going to remove this gutta percha and you're going to, to just leave around 3 to 4 mm like gutta percha in the apical portion and rest you're going to remove and after that you're going to enlarge this root canal with the help of GG drill that is your get glidens drill because now this post it is comparatively larger than your root canal so because of that you need to enlarge your canal with the help of this GG drill and finally you're going to this you're going to do this final post space preparation with the help of another instrument and then you're going to do the dentin pre-treatment and after that you're going to place a luting agent because now you need to lute this particular post into the canal so you're going to place the luting agent and then you're going to insert the post and after that you're going to do the build up that is the core build up and then you're going to do the apartment preparation now, over here you can see this is the ferrule which is prepared and this is the like preparation which is done of your particular core and after that you're going to place the crown over it so this is the basic procedure for your post and core 
so this was all about the first part of the post and core system now in the next part i'm going to cover everything about the classification of post because now again that classification of post is very commonly asked in your exam so i'm going to cover everything about the classification of post as per your exam point of view as the posts they are available in various like types the material is different the forms and types are different so i'm going to cover everything about it and in this particular video the most commonly asked question is about the ferrule i hope you found this video helpful and if you did then please like comment share and do subscribe to my channel thank you so much